Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Sid Roth is with me, and today is your day. I'm telling you, your day for a miracle. Listen, I'm feeling the anointing already. I've been talking to Sid, and it's been wonderful. I am just so glad I have you enjoyed came. it myself. You know, it's amazing. I have known of Sid Roth since the 70s, in fact. You got saved in 71. One. And today I want to hear all about you. I, you know, we're going to have such a wonderful time. Call your friends and tell them that Sid Roth is my guest on This Is Your Day. And really, I'm telling you, precious saints, the, the anointing that I'm feeling even now is really precious. Let's begin. Now, you were brought up in a Jewish home. Right. Both my parents, as the, uh, the rabbis always say, uh, I assume both of your parents were not Jewish. And they're hoping I'm going to say, well, one was a distant Jew. I said, no, both of my <laughs> parents were Jewish. I was raised in a religious home. <laughs> um, my parents, when I was a child, were athletes. They had a favorite sport. Mm. It was poker. <laughs> Uh -huh. And uh, seriously, they were out every night playing uh -huh. poker, and I was home alone before the movie started. <laughs> the home, yes. home alone movie. <laughs> so, but I was scared, and I remember saying over and over again, "I wish they'd come home. I wish they'd come home." You know, as a little child, uh, and a thought popped in my mind. And it was a weird thought because in Judaism, we, it's the Chaim, it's the life. <laughs> yes. We don't think about death, especially a young kid. Right. And a question popped in my mind. What happens when you die? And I started to try and imagine what would happen. I mean, you know, the question came up, what would happen when I die? And it got so objectionable. I did the only thing I possibly could do. I blocked it from my mind. And uh, then I was bar mitzvah, I went to college, I got a job at Merrill Lynch, I'm married, I have a child, I'm 29, I want to be a millionaire by age 30. <laughs> I was a songwriter. I wrote wow. a song, by the way. It was Which called, one was that? Uh, well, it was number five or six in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> really? I didn't know any of this about you. Wow. Well, but the song... You know, when someone writes a song or paints a painting, yeah. it reflects what's going on well, inside of, course, of them. Of course. And the name of the song was, There Must Be Something More. And I remember the words, There Must Be Something More, because I work, eat, sleep, and that's the way it goes. Because I work, eat, sleep, and that's the way it goes. There must be something more. And, and so, age 29, I wanted to be a millionaire by 30. I was doing well. But I was no millionaire. I did something I'm not proud of. I left my wife. I left my daughter. Mm. I left my job. And I went searching for happiness. The only problem, Benny, is I didn't know <laughs> where to, to sure, find happiness. Course. Things got worse. By the end of the first year that I had separated from my wife and daughter, I got involved in a New Age meditation course. And I invited... Uh, they called it a counselor. The Bible calls it a familiar spirit hmm. inside of me. If you ever read the book or saw the movie The Exorcist, I lived it. Oh, my God. So what does a Jewish person do when they know this is going on? Uh, at the same time, I had this familiar spirit inside of me that was directing my life. And one day, a man walks into my office I met him once before, and he said, Sid, my partner and I have been observing you. We want to offer you free rent, free telephone, free secretary, if you ever want to go into business for yourself. I thought, wow, this power I'm tapped into wow. is pretty good. So I do this, but then he happens to be involved in another power. I didn't know this. He happened to be a born-again Christian. And God told him to invite me and give me that free office. And one day he walks in, and he has a Bible like this, except it was much bigger and it was black. 
and he said sid did you know in your own tour god condemns your involvement in the new age and i said no yes and i said they're all good people he turns to deuteronomy chapter 18 sure enough God called it an abomination to do it, be involved in uh, communicating with the dead, sure, fortune tellers, psychics, etc. So that kind of rattles me a little bit because it's in my own Bible. And so I decide I'm going to get my mind off of things. I go into a bookstore. I look, go into the New Age section because that's what I'm into. And sure enough, there's a book there that grabs my attention. The name of the book was The Jew, the Bible, and the Supernatural. I'm Jewish. I'm reading the Bible uh, because these, you know, that Deuteronomy sure. 18, and I'm into the supernatural. And so uh, I read this book, and it had a wrinkle these Christians never told me. These Christians told me it was an abomination to be involved in the New Age, but this book had a different premise. It says it's an abomination for anyone to do this but it's worse for a Jew. And it lists famous Jewish people that had been involved in power, not knowing the source of the power, which was not of God, mm -hmm. and how they lost their life. My hero was in that book, Brian Epstein. Do you remember who him? He was the manager of the Beatles, the mm -hmm. Jewish manager of the Beatles. Every Jew it mentioned in this book was doing the same thing I was doing, and they all lost their lives. At that point, I broke into something called have you ever heard of astro projection? Yeah. Where your spirit leaves your body? Sure. Well, when I broke into that, I couldn't control it. And it scared me because someone said, once your spirit leaves your body, uh, every time you fall asleep, this happens to you. And uh, did you ever see Twilight Zone with Rod Serling? A long time ago. Okay, I had a script for him that he would have loved. Mm. I mean, I was afraid to go to sleep at night for fear my spirit would leave my body and not make it back. What do you mean by you could not control it? I like couldn't control it. Happened... it, it, it th I was told every time I go to sleep, my spirit would go out of my body. Oh, my Lord. Uh, so I was, I was scared. I, came, I was convinced I had a demon. I was convinced I didn't want it. I wanted to go right back to where I was before I had opened this door. And I didn't know how. Now, the same man that told me Deuteronomy 18, he's a Christian, and he said to me, Sid, there's a greater power than what's bothering you. His name is Jesus. He's the Jewish Messiah. Hmm. Well, I have to tell you, as a Jew, I would look, I would knock on any door, the New Age, anything, Hinduism, anything, except Jesus. He'd be the only door. It's like an unspoken word in religious Judaism, of which I was part of. And, but when a man is sinking and someone throws him a rope, yeah, of course. I'll grab it, and you would too. And so I went to bed. It was the worst night of my life. I called my wife, who I was separated from, and I said, and my wife, I thought, had all the bases covered because uh, she was raised as a Southern Baptist. Uh, she uh, got to college, became an agnostic, and when we got married, she converted to Orthodox Judaism. So I figured any Southern Baptist agnostic Orthodox Jew knows how to get in touch with God. So I called her, and she said she'd pray for me, but you know, it's an agnostic, but she did. And I went to bed, and I had a, not a Billy Graham prayer. I had a two-word prayer, and this is what I prayed from a broken man that had nowhere else to go but Jesus. Wow. I prayed, Jesus, help. I knew nothing about repentance. I knew nothing about nothing. I just knew there was a stronger power than what was tearing me apart. I didn't want to live. Do you remember the young boy I told you about that had this conversation about what happens when you die? And I blocked it from my head. I didn't even want to think about it anymore. Death at that point looked better to me than life. Mm. The reason it did is because life was too hard. I was a positive thinker, but positive thinking works until your first crisis. Yeah. And I had a major crisis, and positive thinking would not help me. And I knew it was real. Well, I said that prayer. I went to bed. I did not care. I really didn't, whether I lived or died. When I woke up, Benny, it's the most amazing thing, first of all, I woke up. I didn't even know if I'd wake up. My room was filled, the best way I can describe it is liquid love. 
I had never felt that. Uh, I, I, I might have been once in my life slightly high on alcohol. I didn't drink. I never took a drug in my life. I don't know what that's like. But I can tell you the pure love of God that I felt in that room. If you had said, Sid, I'll give you $100 million if you're fearful or worried. If you can fear something or worry, I'll give you $100 million. I'd say keep your money. I can't worry. With, you know, when you're in the presence of pure love, the God kind of love, no. not a human type of love, there is nothing this earth has to offer. That's right. And so, and then I heard the audible voice of God for the first time in my life. And this is what God said to me. And I didn't even know it was in Malachi. This is what he said. I hate divorce. Return to your wife and daughter. Mm. And you know what I said? Yes, sir. That's what, that's what we're just. I was a dead man as far as I was concerned. And he gave me life. Oh, and that presence, if that, now that, that happened over 40 years ago. And I'm going to tell you the way the human mind is, I forget that. But here's what happened. I started reading my own Jewish scriptures. And I found out this Bible wasn't just legends as I thought it was. I found that this Bible is filled with predictions with an amazing promise from God. This is the promise. If a prophet comes to you and makes a mistake, he's not from me, God says. Correct. How could God make a mistake? He's dealing in a realm called eternity where there's no time. So when he says something's going to happen, he already knows it's happened. There's no guesswork. So a psychic that's right by their own admission, maybe 20% of the time, and I don't even think it's that high, by this book, by the Bible, is not from God. So I heard the voice of God, and he said, return your wife and daughter. Benny, Joy and I have celebrated our 50th wedding that's anniversary. Wow. God restored my mind. He restored my life. He restored my marriage. He restored everything. And I have to tell you, I would, I don't understand backsliders. I, I, I just have to tell you that. I know what's back there. If you knew what was back there, you would repent of your sins. Absolutely. And you would walk into the arms of pure love. But, you know, so many people, they, uh, they, they don't even know what the Bible says. The Bible shows absolute proof. It has the whole history of the Jewish people, past, present, and future. You know how many mistakes it's made as far as the predictions? Zero. Why? It's from God. He's, he's, God says we Jewish people will be the most blessed people on the face of this earth. But if we don't follow Moses and the Torah, we'll lose our temple. 70 AD, we lost our temple. We'll lose our city, Jerusalem. We'll be scattered to the four corners of the earth. It's all there in the Torah. And in Deuteronomy 28, whatever country we immigrate to will eventually turn, out, uh, turn against us. That's the history of the Jewish people. That same Bible, not the New Testament, the Old Testament. You know, I believe everything in the New Testament is in the Torah, of course. if you have eyes to see it. Exactly. This, this Torah says the Messiah would be born in one city of all the cities in the world. One city. If he wasn't born in Bethlehem of Judea, he would not be the Messiah. This Bible says the Messiah would come from the seed of David. Jesus was from the seed of David. This Bible says the Messiah would die with his hands pierced. Yeah. This Bible says that we Jewish people would not realize he was the Messiah and the Gentiles would follow him. This Bible says even when he would die. It says the Messiah in the prophet Daniel would be cut off, die, and then the temple would be destroyed. If the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, whoever the Messiah is, he had to come before 70 AD. Everything in Judaism makes sense when you recognize there is one God. Do you know what his name is forever? A lot of people don't know this, but the Torah tells us. Mm. His name is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Amen. and it says that's his name forever. This Torah says there's only one God. 
And isn't it interesting? Muslims, Christians, and Jews all accept the Torah is from God. And this Torah says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, one God. I also believe in one Messiah, two appearances. This is where most of my Jewish brethren have missed it. The rabbis have told us about the second appearance. There'll be peace on earth when the Messiah comes. Rightfully so. That's what the Torah says. But the Torah also says in Isaiah 53 that few would believe the report of the prophets. Benny, I, my father was born in Poland from a very orthodox family. I wanted family. to ask you about your parents. But, well, you know. my father and I had a very tough relationship because of my belief in Jesus. And I understand that you had a tough relationship oh, yeah. because of your belief in Jesus. Well, I, mine was, I mean, it was such a, I was public. And, and being public with belief in Jesus, I, my father was totally embarrassed, mortified by it. But I took Isaiah 53. I, it was written some 800 years before Jesus was born. Did you know that? I took Isaiah 53. I read it to my father my Orthodox Jewish father, and this is what my father said. Stop. You're reading from a Christian Bible. You're <laughs> describing wow. Jesus. Wow. And I said, Dad, take a look at the inscription. It's from our Orthodox rabbi. It was a Jewish Bible. It was a Tanakh. And my father said, it's describing Jesus. Well, he held out. I get a call from the hospital. A week before the call from the hospital, that presence of God that I experienced some 40 years ago came on me. Oh. 24 hours a day, full seven days. I walked in that hospital room, Benny, and I was aglow with the Spirit. And I said, Dad, Mom always said, heaven must be a wonderful place. Mom is in heaven, my sister Shirley, is a believer in the Messiah. My wife is a believer in the Messiah. Your grandchildren are believers in the Messiah. Do you believe Yeshua, that's Hebrew for Jesus, is your Messiah and Lord? And he said, yes. And I, my sister, who's a school teacher, she was there and she's a believer in the Messiah. She lives in Israel now. My sister said, I can't believe this, Benny. My sister, my educated sister says, I didn't hear him. It was too soft. He didn't have a voice. Mm. And so she said, Dad, are you saying that Jesus is your Messiah and Lord? And Benny, before the angels in heaven, my father, without a voice, said, yes. <laughs> I hope God I didn't break Lord. your TV. Wow. But I <laughs> said, yes. And so every member of my immediate family are believers in Jesus. Do you know I'm feeling a tremendous anointing with you? And just before we say goodbye, because we have about seven minutes or so left, pray with them quickly. Many of them, I think, are being touched by the Lord right now. I know that. Would you pray with them? You see, before I came here, God says He knew you yeah. before you were conceived in your mother's womb. And I tell you something, 40 years of walking with the Messiah, the peace I felt back then, I feel that's what Benny just described. That's right. It's the same peace. And I also know something else. Many of you are feeling that peace right now in your heart. It's, it, it's actually, it, it, it's that same peace. It, he has a name. He's a person. His name is Rach HaKodesh, the yeah. Spirit of the Living God, Holy Spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, you reveal Jesus to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike that's watching right now, backslider, say this prayer and mean it to the best of your ability. <laughs> say, dear God, out loud, it's very important, say it out loud, just take a few seconds. Dear God, please forgive me for every mistake I've ever made. I'm so sorry. Please give me the power to overcome these mistakes. Help me turn from them. For some of you involved in pornography, sex outside of marriage, drugs, addictions of all kinds, lying, stealing, 
but I'm going to tell you about my Messiah. He paid the price for every one of those sins. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you believe that he died, he's the one Messiah for the whole world, how could there ever be peace on earth with a Muslim Messiah, a Jewish Messiah, and a Christian Messiah? One God, one Messiah, the Jew, Jesus. Say out loud, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and God remembers them no more. And I am clean. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come inside of me right now. Take over my life. I make you Lord of my life. Amen. There is such a powerful anointing here, precious people. As Sid was talking, and if you pray that prayer with him, please call the number. We'd like to send you some info. There's people God is healing right now. Let's just believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal your precious people. Lord, Sid and I right now agree as, as, as one. You said if two will agree, it will be done. Heal every person calling upon the name of Jesus, Yeshua. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I give you praise, Lord. I see a lady with skin cancer getting healed right now. By the power of God, you're feeling tremendous power on you. Sid, what is God showing you? He told me there are people with bursitis and you're being healed right now. Thank there are you. people with a pain at the bottom of your neck, you're excruciating pain, that is connecting to your shoulders in that area, you are being healed. There are people with pain in their right hip, you're being healed right now, in your back, spine, you're being healed right now. It's very important to act by faith Man. and do something you couldn't do before. Yep. Somebody with a muscle condition is also being healed. Father, every person calling upon your name, Jesus, Heal them for your glory. Amen. Listen, don't miss the program tomorrow. Sid will be back, and, and he's going to minister on what's happening in Israel. Just give them a little, a little taste of tomorrow, please. I've had two meetings in the last year and a half, not in New York City, but in Jerusalem, Israel. So many Jewish people were healed and born again that the, my friends that are believers in the Messiah in Israel actually said, Sid, you are exaggerating. But praise God, Pastor Benny, I have video footage of it. And we're going to show you that footage tomorrow. It's really powerful. This book, uh, they thought for themselves, 10 amazing Jews. Precious saints, you have got to hear what Sid has brought with him. This is powerful. Please tell him. This book came from a dream. And God himself told me to write it. He said more Jewish people would come to know him than anything I'd ever done. We have close to one and a half million have been sent by mail to Jewish families throughout North America. The same amount have been sent in Russian wow. to Russians in the former Soviet Union. There, there are testimonies of so many Jewish people coming to the Lord through this book. And, you know, this will strengthen you as a believer. And think about that God would use this book if you give it to some Jewish person, you know. You'll want to read it yourself. Yeah. Trust me, it'll solidify your faith like nothing you've ever read. Then give it to the Jewish person. God himself is going to have cross your path. Now, this one here, he has another book, The Incomplete Church. Please tell me about this. The first will be last. The first were the Jewish people. The last to come in will be the Jewish people. And when the Jew and Gentile Christian spiritual DNA merge into what Paul calls the one new man, mm -hmm. he calls it life from the dead, we will see the same miracles Jesus did and even greater. That's what we're coming into. So you believe that when the Jew and Gentile merge together, our DNA coming, coming together is when we're going to see the greater work. Yeah, there's like a deficiency, in my opinion, in Gentile Christians. There's a deficiency in Jewish believers in Jesus. We, the deficiency is met when the two come together to make the full dwelling place of God for his spirit. Well, you know, this fits with the book of Acts because when Peter went to the house of Cornelius, right after that is when the greatest revival hit Jerusalem. That's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Really? Okay, I want to hear it. Make sure to get this book. 
And uh, by the way, now both books, for those who'll get these two books, you're going to get these ones free that are really quite powerful. Let's begin with this one, The Mystery Law of Evangelism Revealed. This is designed for a Christian. Everyone is interested in laws of healing. Why? We want to, we want to get better. Sure. But we don't take our healing to heaven. We don't need healing there. Everyone's interested in the spiritual laws of finances. Uh, but we don't need money in heaven. We need that here, and rightfully so. But how many are interested in the mystery laws of evangelism? This will show you how to reach more Gentiles than you ever thought possible. But when you reach, understand the Jew and how to reach the Jew, it's a key to unlocking the mystery law of evangelism. And the and second this one book, here, yeah. Which this is book, the eyewitness. They're, they're printing a million. The final others. day on earth. You, you, you're talking about what now here? I, I'm talking about the return of the Messiah. And I'm talking about what the Bible says about the final day on earth, but eyewitnesses of it. It is one of the most exciting evangelist booklets we've ever offered. Wow. Uh, we are, there be, I wouldn't go anywhere without one to give someone. Okay, these two books you can have for a gift of 50 to the ministry, $50, and we'll send you these free with them. Please call the number on the screen. Oh, listen, that anointing is so strong. Lay, lay hands on these prayer requests and ask God to bless the people. Father, in Yeshua's name, you yes, said Lord. if two or more agree yes, touching Lord. any one thing, it would be done. Yes, well, Lord. then he and I are touching these prayer requests. Yes, Lord. And I pray that healing, families being restored, physical healing, emotional healing, and financial healing Father, occur in Jesus', in Jesus name. I've been asking you as my partner to send in pictures of loved ones and friends. Our people are praying 24 hours a day in this prayer room for you. And I don't want you missing the opportunity to be prayed for. Let's believe for when we come together in prayer and in agreement, things always happen. Get ready. Your miracle is surely on the way. were athletes. They had a favorite sport. Mm. It was poker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, seriously, they were out every night playing wow. poker. And I was home alone before the movie started. <laughs> the home, yes. home alone movie. So, but I was scared. And I remember saying over and over again, I wish they'd come home. I wish they'd come home. You know, as a little child. Uh, and a thought popped in my mind. And it was a weird thought because in Judaism, we, it's the chayim, it's the life. <laughs> yes. We don't think about death, especially a young kid. Right. And a question popped in my mind. What happens when you die? And I started to try and imagine what would happen. I mean, you know, the question came up, what would happen when I die? And it got so objectionable. I did the only thing I possibly could do I blocked it from my mind. And uh, then I was bar mitzvah, I went to college, I got a job at Merrill Lynch, I'm married, I have a child, I'm 29, I want to be a millionaire by age 30. <laughs> I was a songwriter. I wrote wow. a song, by the way. It was Which called. Which one was that? Uh, what well, was number five or six in Belgium? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You got saved in 71, One. and today I want to hear all about you. I, you know, we're going to have such a wonderful time. Call your friends and tell them that Sid Roth is my guest on This Is Your Day. And really, I'm telling you, precious saints, the, the anointing that I'm feeling even now is really precious. Let's begin. Now, you were brought up in a Jewish home. Right. Both my parents, as the, uh, the rabbis always say, uh, I assume both of your parents were not Jewish. And they're hoping I'm going to say, well, one was a distant Jew. I said, no, both of my <laughs> parents were Jewish. I was raised in a religious home. <laughs> um, my parents, when I was a child. <laughs> really? I didn't know any of this about you. Wow. Well, but the song, you know, when someone writes a song or paints a painting, yeah. it reflects what's going on well, inside of, course, of them. Of course. And the name of the song was 
there must be something more and i remember the words there must be something more because i work eat sleep and that's the way it goes because i work eat sleep and that's the way it goes there must be something more and and so age 29 i wanted to be a millionaire by 30 i was doing well but i was no millionaire i did something i'm not proud of i left my wife i left my daughter mm -hmm. i left Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Sid Roth is with me, and today is your day. I'm telling you, your day for a miracle. Listen, I'm feeling the anointing already. I've been talking to Sid, and it's been wonderful. I am just so glad I have you enjoyed came. it myself. You know, it's amazing. I have known of Sid Roth since the 70s, in fact.